Good afternoon, everyone. I cordially welcome you all for the eighth lecture of, of the short course on cultural linkages towards Asian ideology. Today, we are focusing on English as a lingua franca and English accents. Is there a particular accent we should learn or use? The program for today is such that the lecture is scheduled to, to be for 45 minutes with a short break of five minutes followed by another 30 minutes of the lecture and a question and answer session. May I now have the honor of introducing our guest lecturer, Bimali Indratna, lecturer in Applied Linguistic at the Department of Education at the York University in the United Kingdom. Dr. Indratna started her career as an English language teacher in Sri Lanka and then worked here at the General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. Before joining the University of York, she also worked at King's College London and Lancaster University, UK. Our esteemed guest holds a PhD in Applied Linguistics and a Master's in TESOL, both from Lancaster University. She obtained her bachelor's degree from Peradeni University and Master's in Linguistic degree from Kalania University. She also holds Cambridge Delta and CELTA. Her main research interest is second language acquisition. She has also run several research and teacher learning tra training projects in Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Pakistan on English language teaching materials designing, dyslexia, and inclusive practices and English for academic purposes. She is currently involved in a replication study under SLA for All Initiative and a project on event real realization in singular learners of English. Dr. Indratna has published in reputed journals in the field and has been a plenary speaker in many important conferences, such as TESOL Greece Specific Learning Differences Colloquium and the 20th National RES. She has also been an invited speaker at several institutions and a regular speaker at international conferences, such as American Association for Applied Linguistics, EuroSLA, and ITELA. Dr. Indradna is a consultant in Learning Canada and works with the Ministry of Education, Sri Lanka, on school-based teaching development projects and online teaching initiatives. Madam, we are profoundly honored to have you with us here and we warmly welcome you to deliver this lecture. Thank you. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, madam. So uh, as you know, my topic is uh, on uh, English language and language use particularly, and also we are, we are going to talk about accents. Um, so we all use English, uh, because you follow degrees in English medium. So English is the main medium of instruction for you at the moment. And also in Sri Lanka, um, you have all learned English as your second language. Um, so whatever the content that I'm going to cover is relevant to you. And you might know some of the things, but there can be things that you don't understand. Uh, you're not sure of. Um, you can ask questions anytime you want. Um, so are all of you familiar with using the chat on Zoom? Uh, and breakout rooms? Yes. Okay, good. Right, so I, I just don't want to do, deliver a, a complete lecture. So um, I will give some tasks uh, that for you to work on so you will understand the content better. Um, so let me first share my screen. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, English as a lingua franca, um, uh, probably those who are from the TESOL uh, degree program, uh, they know this uh, term, but the others you might not know. We will come to this term later. Uh, so this is a very uh, famous uh, term that we use in our field, English as a lingua franca and English accents. So what we are going to discuss today is uh, that 
when we learn english uh, uh, do we need to um, do we need to use a particular accent or do you think how we speak now is enough um, so that's what we are going to discuss today and before i talk about this how, how the world thinks about accent english accents and whether we should adopt a different accent whether we should change the accent we already have before we talk about these things i would like you to discuss um, answers to five questions so what i'm going to do now is i will send you a document uh, on the chat Okay, so can you please check the chat? You can download the document. Uh, if you're using a mobile phone, you might not be able to, but if you're using your laptop, you can download the uh, document. At least can some of you download the document? My yeah. I can't see the document. Uh, you uh, are you using your mobile phone or a uh, tablet? No, 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 I'm joining to the computer. Uh, okay, so on the chat, then you should be able to see something called handout one. If you go to the chat, no, no, no. Okay, let me share it again. The others, can somebody check? Oh, now I can see you. Okay, right. Uh, if you click on that, you can download it. Right. Have you managed to download the document? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, right, there are five questions. You can think about the answers and uh, you can uh, underline or you can think write down the answers to the five questions. So there are five multiple choice questions. Right, if, you, if there are people who who uh, who didn't manage to download? I'll show you the questions on the screen. Right, you can you can write the answers. Take a piece of paper and write the answers. So this is the first question. Which English do you speak? You can write the answer A, B, C, O, D. The second question is, which English did you learn at school? Again, write the answer, A, B, C, O, D. Right. Question three, which English do you think you should learn? So imagine you're at KDU. So which English do you think you should learn thinking of your future? Again, uh, which answer do you think is correct? A, B, C, or D? Question number four, which is the acceptable word in English? A is milk rice, B is kiribat. Which one do you think you would use in English? Kiribat? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, question number five, which is acceptable word in English? Again, number A is kaum, 
B is oil cake. Which one would you use in English? Right, okay. So those are the five questions. I guess you have the answers now. Right, let's see um, what you thought. The first question was, uh, which English do you speak? A is British, B is American, C is English, uh, sorry, Sri Lankan, D is other. What's your answer? Can you type your answer on the chat? Which English do you speak? British, A, um, American, B, Sri Lankan, C, other, D. Okay, I see a lot of answers. Uh, most people say C and some people say A. Okay, good. Um, let's, it seems most people think we, we speak Sri Lankan English. Right, the second question is, um, which English did you learn at school? A, British English, B, American English, three, uh, C, Sri Lankan English, D, other. Can you type your answer? Which English did you learn at school? Um, okay, it seems a lot of people think we learned British English at school. Okay, so there is B, American English. Right, uh, okay, so the majority things we learned British English at school. Right, Num question number three is, which English do you think we should learn, right? Not what we learned, but which English think the future, which English do you think we should learn? A, British English, B, American English, three, Sri Lankan English, um, uh, sorry, A, B, C, and D other. Okay, right. So I think there are mixed responses. So, but still, most people say A, so British English. Okay, good. Right. I think that the next two questions are the most important questions for me. So, the next question is uh, which which is the acceptable word in English? A, milk rice, B, kiribat, A or B. <laughs> right, again, uh, it seems there are mixed answers. Some people think it's kiribat, some people think it's milk rice. Yeah, but I think the, most people think it's Kiribat. Uh, there are more A answers. Right, the last question is, um, which is the acceptable word in English? A, cow, B, oil cake. Okay, so oil cake, there are B answers more. I think in the previous one also, milk rice, a, you chose A. So majority of you think uh, we should say milk, milk rice instead of kiribat and oil cake instead of kaung when we use it in English. Okay, right. Right, so we'll come to these uh, answers later after we this after the lecture after I uh, explain the content. But before that, what do you think of your accent? Are you happy with your accent?
Which accent do you think you have? Any answers? Anybody? Okay, Australian, Sri Lankan. Um, okay, I think it depends on where you're from, Sri Lankan. Okay, right. I'm going to send you a link on the chat now. It's for a survey. Right, so when you click on the link, you will see 10 questions. Please answer the questions quickly. I'll give you about five minutes. Um, so let me send you the link now. Right, can you see the link? A survey monkey link? Yeah, can you click on that? Even if you're using a phone, you can still click and uh, complete this the survey. Can you please complete the survey? Yeah, I can see about 20 people have uh, already uh, answered. Can the others please answer the questions quickly? Right, we have got 34 responses. Um, I'll give you one more minute and then I'll show you the results.
Okay, we, I think we have about 40 um, uh, responses. So I'll show you the answers now, the answers you gave. Right, so the first question was, uh, I'm confident in my English pronunciation and majority of you agree that you're happy with your uh, current uh, pronunciation. Then the second question, I speak English with a native-like accent. Uh, um, so most of you agree that you have a native-like accent, uh, but there are people who do not agree or disagree, and also there are people who disagree. Uh, and then I have a non-native accent, then most of you agree that you have a non-native accent. Um, I'm happy with my accent. Most of you are happy with your accent. Um, I, I hesitate to show my accent. You disagree that you are happy to show your accent. Uh, number six, native speakers of English can easily understand my accent in English. Uh, you agree that you, you can be understood by the native speakers. Uh, then number seven, non-native speakers of English can easily understand my accent in English. Um, you agree. That means people who are not native speakers can still understand your accent. Um, I would like to keep my accent. Um, the majority agree that you like to keep your accent. Um, this one, I would like to sound like a native speaker of English. It seems most of you agree that you, you like to have a native speaker like uh, accent or sound. Um, and finally, my pronunciation would be acceptable in international business. Most of you agree. Okay. Right. Thank you very much for responding. So let's see. Uh, in, after the lecture, we'll come back to, to the answers and see whether you have the same opinion um, after I deliver the content. Okay. So let's go to the um, lecture. Right, so this is what uh, we have already done. You answered these questions, right. Okay, now, because we are talking about Asian context, um, so similar as I have just given you a small survey, but people have actually studied about the uh, attitudes of Asians towards English accents. Um, so I, from the survey responses that we did now, it seems you are happy with your accent. Probably you, most of you have Sri Lankan accent and you're happy with your accent. But in other countries, in other Asian countries, the picture is not very similar. Uh, so these are uh, five, uh, six studies done in different countries, Hong Kong. Uh, so the second one covered Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, and third one, Malaysia, China, Oman, and Thailand. And most of these studies were uh, done at universities with university students to see what they think of um, English accents. Um, so on the last column, you can see the reference of uh, those who uh, did the study. But what's important for us is to see the third column. What do they think of um, their accents, local accents and native speaker accents? Now in Hong Kong, um, university students had more negative attitudes, local accents. For example, their Hong Kong attitude, uh, Hong, Hong Kong accent, they didn't like their Hong Kong accent. They liked to have uh, uh, a native speaker accent. In, in the next study, Japan, South Korea, and Malaysia, Japanese and Korean students, uh, they didn't like the local accents, they preferred native accents. Only Malaysian students um, preferred the local accent. Uh, the third study, again in Malaysia, they were asked to rate different accents and they liked Scottish and American accents, uh, apart, uh, other than the other um, non-native accents. Uh, the fourth study was in China. Again, 71% too uh, of the participants were unhappy about their Chinese accent. Uh, in Oman also, the students preferred accents from the UK. And in Thailand, again, 
they didn't like their local accents. They they wanted to sound like native speakers. So this is, uh, if you look at the Asian context as a whole, what we still see is that students uh, or, or second language learners of English, um, they don't like their local accents. They like to have native-like accent, native-like could be British or American. So they prefer to have a native-like accent. And, and also uh, you can see from the uh, results that they, they have negative attitudes towards the local accents. Um, so who is a native speaker and what is the native speaker accent? So before uh, we think whether we should have a native speaker accent, we have to understand who the native speakers are and what their accent is. So I'm going to, um, okay, let me stop sharing. You're going to hear four recordings of four people. You can decide out of the four who the native speaker is, right? So there are four people talking you need to decide whether the native speaker is number one, two, three, or four, right? So let me share the screen again. Um, so if you do not hear the sound, please let me know. I'll try to play now. Some people are light or color sensitive. Bright sunlight or fluorescent lights may bother them. Black print on shiny white paper may be uncomfortable and whiteboards may be too shiny. Pattern glare might also be a problem. It may be helpful to have colored paper for writing, colored overlays for reading, tinted lenses and glasses for both reading and writing. The colors and brightness on computer screens can be adjusted to suit individuals. Right, did you hear the sound? Hello? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Okay, yes, right. Madam. Okay, so this is the second speaker. Some people are light or color sensitive. Bright sunlight or fluorescent lights may bother them. Black print on shiny white paper may be uncomfortable and whiteboards may be too shiny. Pattern glare may also be a problem. It may be helpful to have coloured paper for writing, coloured overlays for reading, tinted lenses and glasses for both reading and writing. The colours and brightness on computer screens can be adjusted to suit individuals. Right, speaker three. Some people are light or colour sensitive. Bright sunlight or fluorescent lights may bother them. Black print on shiny white paper may be uncomfortable and white moulds may be too shiny. Pattern glare may also be a problem. It may be helpful to have coloured paper for writing, coloured overlays for reading, tinted lenses and glasses for both reading and writing. The colours and brightness on computer screens can be adjusted to suit individuals. Right, number four. Some people are light or colour sensitive. Bright sunlight or fluorescent lights may bother them. Black print on shiny white paper may be uncomfortable and whiteboards may be too shiny. Fat and glare may also be a problem. It may be helpful to have coloured paper for writing, coloured overlays for reading, tinted lenses and glasses for both reading and writing. The colours and brightness on computer screens can be adjusted to suit individuals. Right, which one do you think is the native speaker? First, second, third or fourth? Can you type your answer? Okay, I can see four people have said number one. Uh, somebody says number four, three, one.
Right. Okay. So it seems majority thinks that uh, first speaker is the native speaker. Actually, all four native speakers. So the first one is from New York. So she has the American accent. Second one is from Scotland. Um, so she is a native speaker of English, but she is from Scotland. So she has a bit of a Scottish accent. Um, then the other two are from England, but two parts of England. So they are also native speakers of in, uh, English. So you can see that when we say native speakers or native speaker accent, there's no one particular accent, right? So there are so many dialects. Uh, so usually we have English native speakers in the USA, Canada, um, even like countries, countries like Barbados, the West Indies, that, that their first language is English, then the UK, uh, then Australia, New Zealand. So there are several countries where English is the first language, but their accents are different. So uh, uh, the Australian accent is very different to British. Uh, we can't say British accent because there are so many accents in the UK. So within uh, English accents, there are variations. So when we say native speaker accent, we can't really think of one accent because there are so many native speaker accents. Right, let's move on to the next part. Right, so how many native speaker accents are there in the world? There are about 160 native speaker accents. So we can't really say we need to have a native speaker accent because which one? Which one do you want to have as a native speaker accent? Is it the Australian accent or Australian accents, different Australian accents from different parts of Australia? Um, if you take the USA, USA is huge. So there are so many dialects, so, so many accents. So which accent do you want as a native speaker accent? So it's actually a myth to say that there is a native speaker accent, not accents, just one accent. So it's not true because there are so many native speaker accents. So if somebody tells you that you need to have a native speaker accent, then you have to question which native speaker accent are you talking about, right? So do you want Scottish accent, uh, Scottish English accent, Canadian English accent, so which one? So that's the myth that we need to understand first. There is no one particular native speaker accent. There are about 160 native speaker accents. What I'm going to show you now is uh, 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 several accents in the UK. So we uh, in, in the first few questions, you said you learned British English. Um, you think you should learn British English, but I will show you how many accents are there in the UK. So this is, um, there are so many other accents, but the main accents in the UK. They agreed that the one who first succeeded in making the travel. Can you hear the sound? Yes, ma'am. Okay. ...take his cloak off should be considered stronger than the other. Then the north wind blew as hard as he could. But the more he blew, the more closely did the traveller fold his cloak around him. I All I knew was this, for the first decade of my life, this tremendous relief from my family. And people come around saying, lovely flat bit. Oh, you are lucky. And the I'm sorry. The horse would he'd go off around the alleyways to the various people, and the horse would just walk a bit further down the road and stop again, and so on, you know. And he ended up down here in the afternoon. The last call. Oh, we put a heap of straw in and shook it all up and watered it, and then drove out these bundles and took it up on a fork. I only followed that through for one twelvemonth, and I took to a stable of horses. And of course, that improves the wages. We had 12 shillings a week then, and a cottage to live with a work. And that was better beard. That was eightpenny beard, see? And it was brewed in Kennet. Well, around here, country's big, big brewery in Kennet. They used to brew some beautiful beard. 
And they, uh, so dump, and they were big blokes in them days. No, you wouldn't get in, under, you wouldn't get in Bristol Police for under six foot. Then it was rinsed in the big square sink, and out, then you went out the yard and you mangled it, and then it went up on the line. You're covered stank. in mud and muck. Oh, we've been for a good old stank. Or, or a stank. Good old stank. And, and yeah. that is Cornish. Stank. Yeah. A tough walk. That was a good old stank, wasn't it? Oh. Braille, a braille stank. And then sometimes the weeds were pulled out by hand. There used to be carlets, uh, which looked very much like mustard seed, but that was a weed. The carlet used to be pulled by hand. Where you going? I said, I'll come to Fudder Side. He said, oh, you mean Fudder Side? I said, I don't know. I said, well, I don't know far, I don't think. <laughs> I come away one day, I said, my granny, I said, oh. When Dad brought a um, stalk of Brussels sprouts home, he trimmed them up on the garden, and uh, they, they would weigh seven pounds. One thing I ask, Carly, is it time for victuals, mate? I always call it vittles. That's maybe only my way, but I just, if we two of us say to my brother, we better go for some vittles, mate, and off we go for the dinner, like. I enjoyed it, and it wasn't really the only truth in it, to tell you the truth, because I never, nobody ever took interest, and of course, I suppose anybody with a good head. I thought that's great, because he said, Oi, up it, you know. Well, I upped it by taking about two paces back. And then I sat there and I watched this bloke as he assembled his drum kit, you see. And I spent the whole rest of the night watching this drummer. If I want to go up hand with pork or anything like that, get a milk bottle, she's saying, she'd shove this white stuff in it and shake it up. And there you go with this bottle of pot and a beetroot sandwich. Things started to change, you see. And the bus was going up to Aberdeen twice a week and I bet some people started to go down on the bus to Machenlech to do their bit of shopping you see. When they're boiled then they've got to be peeled so on the table they go depending on the size of your catch which could in them days be anything from £10 to £150 in weight. The hours mounted up you see you might get back home at uh, say 7 in the morning. I can't forget, one man lower down, and the, the, I told you we lived in one of the old houses, well, on the other corner where the other end was, there was a man who was down the docks, and he was working there, and I just can't think of his name now. I mean, you literally have them eating out of your hand pigeons, like, um, you see them in uh, Piccadilly and places like that where people have fed them and they're all over them, but this is actually being able to pick them up without uh, them flying off. You would tell me what we did in sail. It's a strainer, is sail. You sit on a little three leg steel and get your head stuck into the dark cool side. By God, it was a grand job on a frosty morning. I got a hint there, uh, Alec, when the Gulliver got a glyph and caught the chumman. Why should he? <laughs> I mean, who are you going to catch up? You didn't, get, you didn't get paid if you didn't catch up. That's, that's the, I always love all that. I mean, I love a stronger East, yeah. I mean, you, th them days, you didn't you didn't live with lasses. If if a bloke was gone with a lass and they weren't married, she, she had a bad name. You know, and everybody looked, looked doing on people like that. Which is a shame. I think it's a place for the old-fashioned type of pub. You know, and I mean, the, the ones like the last one we were in, the market, it's been renovated. It really is nice. It's open plan. Beautiful, really is, and it's it they do a lot of catering. Use our mucker talk, our cummel and crack. Cause once it's gone, it'll never come back. Use it ye often, as much as you like, or it'll just get away like snow for die. Hey, I had this say uh, the the horse and gear and we had a big Clydesdale cuddy, a big Clydesdale horse. I've had strains, but that comes from advertising. I know it comes from advertising. And, um, yeah, they just, they just use just use trousers or jeans. Most people wear jeans. There's people could say that better than I could, of course. Uh, I uh, I produced the thing, and uh, I know 
I know people have enjoyed it, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, if people enjoy something that I'm doing or I've, that I've done, then that is a reward on its own, and uh, it seems as though I have a talent, as you say. Now, this is National Golf Month, and if there's no exciting enough for all they followers of the wee white ball, the Irish Open is for the Royal County Down Golf Club, starting on the 28th. Ready, Pete? Don't think of that, you know, I they think they're better now, you won't get them down. They all want to pass jobs now, they won't get them to work on anything. If we work and we will work. Right, okay, so what you have listened to is uh, different accents in the UK. So all of our native speakers all are talking in English, uh, but I'm pretty sure that you didn't understand most of the speakers, right? So uh, probably you understood the first one, but not really everyone and all the things they said. It's because they have different accents. All, all our English speakers, they were speaking in English, but um, again, uh, if somebody says that there is British accent, there isn't something like British accent because there are so many accents in Britain, right? So um, first of all, what we need to understand is we can't really uh, separately say that there is one particular US accent, one particular British accent, one particular Australian accent. Within those countries, there are so many accents, so many native speaker accents. So if somebody tells you that you need to develop, you are learning a native speaker accent, then you need to think which accent from which part of these countries that you are talking about. Um, okay, right, so that's, uh, that's the myth that we have about uh, native speaker accents. Um, but there is something called received pronunciation. So how many of you have gone to elocution classes? Have you? Anybody who has gone to an elocution class? Nobody? Can you type on the screen on the chat if you have gone? Can you type yes? It doesn't matter. I mean, I have gone uh, when I was a kid. So it seems nobody, okay, right. So received pronunciation is something that uh, in the, not now, but in like a couple of de decades ago, there is something called received pronunciations, which is called BBC English or Queen's English, right? So people in, in Sri Lanka, you said you learned British English. So people thought that we should teach British English and as British English, what they thought was received pronunciation or uh, people call it BBC English. So let's see what that is. Um, so it is actually uh, something received pronunciation is um, it, it's, a, it's an old concept. It's not available at the moment. It's changing in the UK. Um, so it used to be the act people used in London um, long ago and also upper class. If you look at the class distinction, upper class people, educated people used to have this received pronunciation, right? But now it is not so. Now the London accent is changing. It is becoming more uh, middle class. Right, so the accent received pronunciation is not very uh, prominent thing in the UK anymore because it has other features. Cockney is a very uh, local dialect in London. So people are using more Cockney features now. So this received pronunciation is not a big thing anymore in the UK. Although in our countries, in most Asian countries, we still think we should teach received pronunciation or we should follow received pronunciation. But it is actually not, it's not the case in the UK, it's changing. So Queen's English, people think we should speak Queen's English, right? So if you, if you go to Sri Lanka, people sometimes say that they speak Queen's English um, to say somebody speaks well, but what's happening to Queen's English? 
So there is a study which analyzed Queen's pronunciation from 1953 to 2015. They analyzed her speeches uh, during this time. And what's happening is Queen's pronunciation has also changed, right? So she's not using the same pronunciation she used 50 years ago anymore. It is changing. So she used to have this upper class, aggressive pronunciation type, more aristocratic type pronunciation earlier, 50s, 60s, but now her pronunciation has changed. It becomes more middle class and less aristocratic. So if again, another myth, if we say we speak, we, we need to speak Queen's English, <laughs> the Queen has already changed her accent, her pronunciation. So there is no particular, we, you know, we can't say there are stick, stri strict principles of pronunciation when we say Queen's English. Uh, right, so what's happening now? Now we are in 2022 and we are not really thinking of British English anymore or Queen's uh, English or received pronunciation. We are talking about world Englishes. Right, so what we mean by world Englishes is, um, so there are three types of countries uh, in this world in terms of the use of English. We have inner circle countries, which means countries like the UK, USA, Australia, where English is the first language. Uh, then we have something called outer circle countries, mostly um, uh, the former colonies colonized by the British, where English is used as a second language, right? For, for uh, education purposes, for administration purposes. So these outer circle countries use English as a second language. Then we have the third set of countries, which is called expanding circle, countries like China, Russia, where English is used as a foreign language, mainly for business purposes, but now they are using it for educational purposes as well, right? So these are the three types of countries where English is used now. So English as the first language countries, English as second language countries, and English as the foreign language countries. So you can imagine um, the variation we have nowadays in terms of accent. This is where we talk about English as lingua franca, right? ELF, English as lingua franca. So what is English as lingua franca is that we think English is an, a language, a common medium of communication for speakers of different first languages. Right, so English is not considered something prestigious anymore. So it is a common medium of communication for speakers of different first languages. So there are more non-native speakers speaking in English now than the native speakers. The ratio is five to one. So when there are five non-native speakers, there is only one native speaker. So there are more non-native speakers using English than the native speakers. So we can't really just think of or accommodate native speaker accents. So there is more communication between non-native speakers than native and non-native speakers. For example, in your context, you speak in English with your lecturers, right? But they are non-native speakers. So there is more communication in English between non-native speakers, right? So you, you very hardly you speak to native speakers. Um, you don't do it regularly, but you use English mostly to talk to non-native speakers. So that's the trend now. Uh, so because of that, we have more localized English now. English as a lingua franca, a medium of communication. So there is more variation and more accents. So in the in today's world, what we need to know, need to do is to be familiar with non-native accents. So it's not really enough that we we get used to native speaker accent because if you look at this figure, 
there are more non-native speakers of English, so we need to get to know more non-native accents as well, right? So it's it's it, we can't say we need to understand only British English. We need to understand Chinese English. Right? We need to understand Russian speaking English. We need to understand Indian speaking English. So we need to get to know more non-native accents. Uh, right, so we have been talking about um, whether there is a particular non -na uh, sorry, native speaker accent and we realize that there is no one particular non native, uh, sorry, native speaker accent and there are different native speaker accents, but the world is changing so nowadays there are so many other accents that we hear and the world has started accepting all the accents not just the native speaker accents but let's talk about an important aspect now now um so we when we think of native speakers we sometimes think probably they are they they pronounce words better Right, so let's see whether that is true. Are native speakers better pronunciation models? Do they pronounce English or, or the, if, if if people can understand their pronunciation? Now, when it comes to pronunciation, we need to understand one word, which is called intelligibility. That means ability to understand, recognize and understand. The definition is the extent to which the speaker's intended utterance is actually understood by the listener. When we listen to somebody, we need to be able to understand. So how far these accents can be understood. So there was a study done um, quite, uh, quite a while ago, but still relevant. So what they did was um, they uh, used recordings from these countries, USA, Malaysia, Japan, Korea, India, Hong Kong, Nepal, the Philippines, and also Sri Lanka. They used recordings of speaker uh, people speaking in English in these countries, and US is the native speaker accent. Uh, so they asked, 1,386 people from 11 countries uh, to rate these accents from these countries, USA, Malaysia, this, these accents, these recordings, they asked these people to rate the recordings for intelligibility. That means how far they can understand these accents. So they predicted that the US uh, the speaker from the US could be the most intelligible. That means people can understand. So, and also they predicted if people are familiar with an accent, then that will be more intelligible. Right, which speaker do you think came out as the most and the least intelligible? Can you guess? So these people rated these accents, US, Malaysia, Japan, Korea, India, Sri Lanka, they rated for the, the ability to understand which speaker do you think that the people understood most? Can you guess? Most is Sri Lankan, madam, just a guess though. Yeah, okay, yes, any other guesses? Any others? The least Japanese. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, let's see the results. Yes, you're correct. So the Sri Lankan speaker came out as the most intelligible and Hong Kong, the speaker from Hong Kong came as the least intelligible and also the native speaker. You can see where the native speaker is. That is just before Hong Kong, just before the least intelligible speaker, right? So the second assumption was also wrong. So if you're more familiar with an accent, you can understand that's also wrong. And only um, less than 40 people actually understood the native, identified the native speaker. So this shows that having a native speaker accent does not mean that you can be understood by the others. Right, so that depends on other factors. It's not that you have a native speaker accent, then you under, you can be understood. There are other features for 
intelligibility. So this is a good judgment, right? So that to show that we don't really need to have a native speaker accent because the purpose of speaking in English is to communicate. And if you have a clear accent, if your pronunciation is clear, then that is sufficient. You don't really need to have a native speaker accent. Um, so, however, there was another study done last year, uh, two years ago, 2020 in Thailand uh, uh, with Thai uh, university students. They again, they showed that they, they understood the non-native speaker accents, uh, countries from expanding circle, accents from those countries, they understood better, but they actually preferred native speaker accents. So this is the difference between preference and intelligibility. So what's more important for us is intelligibility, not really the favor, right? So not really our assumptions or our preferences, but how far we can understand an English speaker. Right, so this shows that we don't really need to develop a native speaker accent, right? So whatever the accent you have is acceptable in today's world. Right, so you can read this, um, this quote from uh, David Christer. So what he thinks is, right, so why do you need a native speaker accent, right? Why do you want to hide your accent? Only if you are a spy, if you want to um, collect information secretly of somebody, somebody, native speakers, then probably you need, you, you don't want to show your accent, you need to hide. So then you need the need a foreign uh, 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 native speaker accent. Otherwise, there's no need of have developing a native speaker accent or any other accent, right? So what the accent you have is fine. Uh, you don't really need to change your accent. But yes, we understand you, 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 your accent is acceptable, but something important is pronunciation. So pronunciation can change the intelligibility, whether you can be understood or not. So it's not really the accent, but pronunciation. So when it comes to pronunciation, in, um, so we say lingua franca course, so there are several principles, there were several um, uh, rules uh, in pronunciation. So people think if you learn these things, then your pronunciation becomes better, you can be intelligible. So these are um, a, a set of phonological features, which uh, nowadays people think, researchers think that if you pronounce this correct, then your accent doesn't matter. So it's not a pronunciation model, but a set of rules. I'll show you some of the rules. Uh, you can understand them easily, right? So first one, some consonant sounds, right? So can you pronounce these two words? The first one, what do you see there? So first one is sheet, right? Second one is seat. So the first sound is different, sheet and seat. So if you if you mix that, then there is a problem of intelligibility. You can't understand. For the second one, if you say sheet, but sheet, then that is wrong because sheet is not the thing that we sit on, that is a seat. Right, so that type of pronunciation is important, right? So pig, fig, because they give different meaning. Root, lute, ban, wan, so consonant sounds. The sounds like per, ver, ver, sh, sir. So those things you have to pronounce correct. So it's not to do with accent, but it's to do with correct pronunciation. Also, if you look at these two words, First one is sheep, second one is ship, right? Again, if you drag the vowel, then it becomes sheep. So for the second one, if you say sheep, that's 
wrong, right? It, because it has a different meaning. Again, so how the vowel length, how you pronounce vowels is important. So bean, bean. Can, can. Full, full. So the, the, the way you pronounce the meaning changes. That's why the vowels, you, you should pronounce the consonants like pa, ra, ba, ka correctly and also vowels. E, e, u, u, those vowels you should pronounce correctly. Uh, then also consonant clusters, the, the letters which come together, like breed, bleed, right? Text, test. So again, there is a meaning difference. If you say test to the first one, that is not a test, that is a text. So these um, uh, clusters you should pronounce correctly. Desks. Discuss, that's different, right? So pronunciation of these words are important. Correct pronunciation is important. Right, so all together, what do these tell us about our pronunciation? You have to get to know different accents. In today's world, otherwise you can't survive. You have to get to know Indian accent, Chinese accent, Canadian accent. You should be able to listen to these speakers and understand, especially international business, traveling, education. You, you find a lot of different people having different accents. So it's good to get to know these different accents. Um, so in your studies, in, if you're, when you're learning, do not rely only on recordings of Sri Lankan speakers and native speakers. Listen to different accents from different countries, different non-native speaker accents. Also, you do not need to change your accent, but see whether your pronunciation is correct. It's not really about the accent. It's about correct pronunciation, whether people who listen to you can understand you. So that's the most important thing when it comes to pronunciation and accents. Okay, right. So uh, my last question is, which accent do I have? Do you listen to me for one hour? Which accent do you think I have? Any answers? Sri Lankan with a hint of Australian, madam. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> okay, right. Any other guesses? Okay, Sri Lankan. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sri Lankan, good. Uh, Sri Lankan with a slight English accent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. So I um. I'm a Sri Lankan, right? So, and I, I, I learned English like you learned English at school. I never spoke English at home. Um, and uh, then I became a teacher and so I, I, I developed my English and I have lived in the UK for 10 years. This is my 11th year, but I still have a Sri Lankan accent. Probably, um, I like you said, probably there, there is some hint of uh, some English accent, but dominant accent of me is Sri Lankan, but I haven't faced any issues of having a Sri Lankan accent in the UK. I teach um, students like you, I work at a university and I teach British students, I teach students from around the world and my accent was never a problem. So uh, what I need, the message I need to give you is that don't be, um, don't have misconceptions or um, don't have, uh, uh, inferior thoughts about your accent. Your accent is fine, right? So you, I think most of you have Sri Lankan accent, your accent is perfectly fine, as long as the others can understand, right? So you don't really need to develop a separate accent, which is a native speaker accent, because that's not a trend anymore um, in this world, right? Um, I would like to go back to the first uh, questions, uh, not the first three questions that I asked. Probably we, we still think we learn British. We actually don't learn British English anymore because um, most of our teachers are non-native speakers. Um, so mostly their pronunciation is Sri Lankan English. 
Um, if you look at the textbooks in Sri Lanka, they have features of Sri Lankan English. So we, although we claim that we learn British English, uh, so there is nothing called British English anymore, like I explained. Um, so we can easily say, even we learn Sri Lankan English, we use Sri Lankan English, but there are features of other Englishers, probably some features from some parts in the UK, some, if you use, um, uh, movies, probably some um, US English, some Australian English, but pre predominantly we actually teach and use Sri Lankan English in Sri Lanka, and that's perfectly fine. But my two questions, whether you use kiribat or uh, milk rice in English, whether you use kelm or oil cake in English, what do you think? Do you think we should call Kiribat uh, milk rice? Mm -hmm. I can see one answer. No. It, no, right? So it why should the, we call it? Uh, yeah, because, because it doesn't give us. Yeah? Uh, no, madam, I was going to say it, it uh, doesn't, it, it uh, I would say it takes away the, I don't know, feeling that you get when saying it? Yeah, that's true. Not that's really very true. It, it doesn't have that exact meaning when you say milk rice, right? Um, yes, yeah, so you don't really need to do that because um, English gets words from everywhere in the world. So, for example, in the UK, we they use a lot of French words, German words. Um, even like, for example, here, they use um, uh, tikka masala. Right? They don't have an English word for that. That's fine. Everybody understands. So you don't really need to translate every single cultural thing um, into English. We don't really need to say oil cake. It doesn't have any meaning, even for British people or even for Sri Lankans. We don't have any particular meaning for oil cake. Cow, everybody understands. So if you see a native speaker, you can tell them this is Kaung and that's this is how we make it. So we don't really need to change these um, words. It's in, in today's world, these words are accepted and English gets words from different languages. Um, okay, right. So that's uh, the two messages I wanted to give. You don't need to change your accent. Your accent is fine. Um, uh, but think of your pronunciation, whether you correctly pronounce the words. Second one is there are cultural elements in our language, in, in, um, in our native language, which we can't really translate into English. So you can use those words, um, especially if you use them in, in Sri Lanka. You don't even like if you come to the UK, you don't really, for example, Ambulthia. You don't, you can't, you can't really translate it, right, and give the meaning. So you really don't need to translate. You can explain what it is, but you can use the original word. Okay, right. So I think that's all I wanted to cover. I hope you got the message. Um, if you have any questions, I can answer. Um, okay, right. So it seems there are no questions. Um, so Tirani, shall we wind up? Um, yes, Madam, sure, but there is a vote of thanks prepared if you can uh, stay for a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the, of the students of the short course on cultural linkages towards Asian ideology. First, I would like to thank our lecturer, Dr. Vimali Indraratna, for sharing her time and knowledge with us and for delivering this lecture amidst her busy schedule. Madam, your address set the tone for this course by clearly discussing English as a lingua franca and English accents. We are blessed to have you contribute to this course. Next, I wish, like, I wish to thank Dr. Hemant Premratna and all other staff at KDU for bringing these lectures together. Thank you. Last but not least, I thank all the participants from our university for joining us today. Your participation has made this lecture a successful event, and I believe it has provided you with new insight into the English language. To conclude, let me once more express my gratitude to Dr. Bimali Indraratna 
for delivering today's lecture. Madam, it's, it is an honor to have you with us and your time and efforts are deeply appreciated. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam. Good evening. <laughs>